Hey everybody, so in these three slides that I'm going to show you from the book, uh, this one is probably the single most important. Now this is going to look familiar. It is similar to the chart that we, or the, the uh, graph that you made a diagram of earlier, except now we're showing how magmas are generated. So it's, if you can see the, the cursor here, I just want to point to these yellow arrows here. This is showing a very important process. As the basaltic crust is subducted downwards, if you remember that crust is made up of several parts, like in the ophiolite, it has sediments on top, and then below the sediments are some pillow basalts, below that are the sheet of dike complex, and then the gabbros. And those things all contain a little bit of water. And as those guys come into, oh, let's go back, as those materials are subducted, that water is essentially squeezed out of those materials. And that water is added into the mantle wedge here. Now this mantle wedge is made of peridotite, just like this material here is peridotite, except this peridotite has water added to it. You remember from the beginning of the class that water decreases the melting temperature. So adding water causes melting to occur and those melts will rise up to eventually form the crust. They show a fairly complex process here, and we're going to skip a lot of the details. The most important thing is that the material that is forming in the crust here is going to be material that's wet. So this pink crust, where it look to see where it says tonalitic remelts, differentiation assimilation, all of those magmas are wet. Whereas over here, the basaltic crust is dry. All the melting that happens to create this blue material is dry. So this is wet and this is dry. And this is wet because of the water being added here. So in the assignment I give you, I'm going to ask you some questions that involve looking at this diagram and interpreting it. Come to the next diagram here. One of the things that's interesting is that uh, there seems to be a special depth where most of the water is released from the subducting slab. And so uh, this distance here from the volcanic arc to where the water is released is constant at about 80 to 100 kilometers. I guess that's not really constant, but it's a narrow range. So if this distance is constant, if you have a flatter dip of subduction, then what that means is if you don't reach 80 to 100 kilometer depths, if this, if this subducted material never reaches 80 to 100 kilometers, then no water is given off, and then there's no melting, and so you can see there's no arc. So the dip of the slab has a huge control on where the arc forms, or if the arc, uh, volcanic arc forms or not. And that's an important part of the history of the western U.S. In the western U.S., we think that the dip of the subducted slab has been shallow at times, uh, pushing volcanic material uh, inward towards the center of the continent, and then sometimes the dip steepens and it brings the arc much closer to the, the plate boundary. The last part of this is to show some diagrams. You can ignore these over on the right. We're going to look at something called the alkali silica diagram, where instead of just K2O, we'll add sodium. It'll be total alkalis. So don't worry about these. These are the kinds of plots that you're going to make in the Excel part of the um, assignment. And there are two divisions, calc alkaline and tholeitic. Now, when I was a student, we were taught that anything that's calc alkaline comes from a subduction zone. We found that that's really not true. There's a lot of stuff in the ocean basin that is calc alkaline, even though it's not subduction related. But subduction rocks tend to migrate towards this alkali end member. Oh, I should explain what this means. A is total alkalized, so it's sodium plus potassium. F is iron, so that's F is short for FeO. And M is for magnesium, MgO. And we call this the AFM diagram, or alkalize iron and magnesium. Tholeitic rocks tend to be enriched in iron, and they, they're not as enriched as in alkalize. Uh, most oceanic rocks, Hawaii, mid-ocean ridges, Iceland, most will plot in the tholeitic field, but they can plot in the calcalkaline field also. Most subduction-related materials will fall in the calc-alkaline field, but sometimes they are tholeitic also. 
So we'll make some comparisons of the mono craters. Uh, now the mono craters, we think that subduction had shut off by the time the mono craters formed. But to give you a little bit of background for the Excel data sheet, there, uh, there's a lot of water coming off the slab. And even though subduction ends, this lithospheric mantle here, just above the mantle wedge, is very wet. And so they can still have a subduction signature, even though subduction might no longer be active. So water is being added, and it's affected not only the, the asthenosphere, but it's also affected the lithosphere, and maybe even the lower part of the crust. So there's a lot of water here, but this area over here is quite dry. And that can have an impact on magmas that are erupted. For the monocraters, we think that they are melting this lithospheric mantle here that's sitting above this wet mantle wedge. So uh, after this uh, lecture, go ahead and make the plots. And as you plot that data, take a look at the assignment and uh, go ahead and answer the questions to that.